My name is Jana Kroniade and uh, I'm the educational manager of BTS Bioengineering Company. During this webinar, I have the pleasure to present the bike functional protocol dedicated to the muscle activity evaluation during cycling. Unlike running or swimming, all foot pedaling is more standardized movement since uh, the circular trajectory of the pedals uh, constrains lower extremity movements. Pedaling is not a simple movement to be studied. The rider on the bicycle be becomes a unique, complex, linked system with four fulcrums, the hip, the knee, the ankle, and the axis of the central movement that is the crank center. Only one of these uh, four fulcrums uh, is uh, fixed, that is the, the crank center. The other three fulcrums can be modified to improve the efficiency of pedaling to um, improve the generation of power and the subject arrangement on the bicycle. In order to achieve a functional cycling, it's mandatory to find the good balance between the mechanical efficiency that represents uh, the power and the maximum energy developed by the muscles, and the physiological efficiency that is necessary to safeguard muscles and joints. BTS Bike Functional Protocol provides an overview of the pedaling technique using an electromyographic approach. The activation pattern of lower limb muscles allows both the force production and its optimal orientation on the pedals. With a complete knowledge of the activation pattern of the standard lower limb muscles during pedaling, it's possible to improve cycling performance and rehabilitation protocols. Cycling trainers and physiotherapists can focus on a particular phase of the pedaling action to train a particular muscle group. It's possible to prevent joint injuries because of wrong settings of the bicycle. The pattern of muscle activation during a rhythmic human motion such as pedaling can be analyzed in terms of timing of activation and level of activation. To do that, we need the technology support. On the muscles, four on the right side and four on the left sides, it's required to apply eight BTS free EMG probes that allow the recording of the myoelectric signals coming from the muscles during the cycling exercise. In this picture, you can see the typical raw signal of a muscle involved in the cycling exercise. It's simple to identify the bars of activation when the muscle fires and the isoelectric phase during which the muscle switches off. In this way, we can say that the muscle has alternate on and off phases with a good consistency. But we are not able to explain this signal properly because we don't know exactly in which phase of the pedaling cycle the muscle is on or off. 
For this reason, we need also BTS G sensor in order to identify the four main time events for the cycle definition. The G sensor has to be applied on the inside of the left pedal crank vertically, while the left pedal is at the top dead center. The cycle, both uh, for right and left side, begins uh, when the pedal is at the top dead center. This, is, uh, uh, this position is zero degrees. Thanks to the acceleration signal, it's possible to identify also the other three main points, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, that uh, is the bottom dead center, and 270 degrees. From uh, zero up to 180 degrees, propulsive or pushing phase is performed. From 180 up to 360 degrees, that is still zero degrees of the next new cycle, the traction or pulling phase is uh, performed. The muscles typically evaluated are gluteus maximus, rectus femoris, vastus lateralis and medialis, semitendinosus and semimembranosus together, biceps femoris, gastrocnemius medialis and lateralis, solius and tibialis anterior. As you know, some of these muscles are monoarticular muscles, others biarticular. Um, has uh, Apotizates by various uh, authors in the literature, all these muscles may have different roles uh, depending on how many joints the muscle traverse. In the 1992, Ryan and uh, Gregor noted that the monoarticular muscles, such as gluteus maximus, uh, vastus medialis, vastus lateralis, and solius, plays an invariant role as primary power producers. Conversely, the biarticular muscles, such as uh, biceps femoris, semitendinosus, and semimembranosus, rectus femoris, gastrocnemius medialis, and lateralis, uh, behave differently and with a greater variability. These muscles appear to be primarily active in the transfer of energy between joints at critical times in the pedaling cycle and in the control of the direction of force production on the pedal. But coming back, let's come back to the goal of this uh, presentation. We need to know if the athlete is using his muscles properly during the cycling exercise. As I already said just before, the muscle behavior can be analyzed both in terms of timing of activation and level of activation. The bike functional protocol allows the users to have information about the muscle coordination the muscle activation level and the symmetry. The muscle coordination depends on the timing of activation of all muscles. Muscle activation timing is studied by defining EMG signal onset and offset times that identify the duration of the EMG bars. Muscle activation timing is generally studied from a representative EMG profile obtained by the average of various consecutive cycles. This mean EMG profile 
is generally represented through the root mean square envelope. And this kind of signal representation allows uh, to better identify the windows of muscle firing and the windows of muscle turning off. In order to detect exactly the onset and the offset, it's necessary to define an EMG threshold that usually is calculated as two, three, or four standard deviation uh, beyond the mean of uh, baseline activity. In the report, the on-off activation timing of each muscle is uh, evaluated within the cycle. Where there is the color red line, green for the right muscles and the red for the left muscles, it means that the muscle is on. Where the line disappears, the muscle is off. The gray band on which uh, the colored lines uh, are overlapping is the normal reference that shows uh, the correct muscle activation timing. The thinner gray band is the standard deviation that represents uh, uh, the possible variation from the average usual uh, behavior. Looking at only the normal muscle behavior, we can see that during the propulsive phase of uh, pedaling, agonist and antagonist muscle pair active together. This action occurs between the joint torque necessary to contribute to joint power and the torque necessary to establish the direction of the force on the pedal. Moreover, the co-contraction of agonist and antagonist muscles may also provide joint stability by reducing the bone displacement and rotation. The EMG signal amplitude allows to have information about the level of activation. Muscle activation level is generally quantified with the root mean square value, the RMS. In the report, there is the average of the RMS calculated over various consecutive cycles. It's the dark line in the middle. The color red band around represents the standard deviation. Through the amplitude analysis, it's possible to define how much the muscle is active over the cycle. In order to compare the muscular activity between different muscles and between different subjects, a lot of uh, authors use and recommend an EMG normalization. In most cases, uh, EMG activity recorded uh, during the test is expressed uh, relative to an isometric uh, maxima voluntary contraction previously recorded. Because it's not obvious that the reference uh, EMG value recorded during the IMVC test can be used to represent the maximal neural drive during pedaling. This type of normalization is strongly uh, criticized on the basis of possible uh, misinterpretations. For instance, in 2000, Otier et al, by using this method, reported an activity level 
above 100% of IMVC tests for the vastus lateralis during a, a brief maximal cycling exercise. To take into account the specificity of the cycling uh, posture on, on the bike, Hunter et al. in 2002 proposed to use more specific isometric tasks performed directly on the cycle ergometer. In the BTS uh, bike functional protocol, the normalization is uh, performed in respect to the peak of activation. This method is named the peak dynamic method. Taking in consideration the normalized RMS of all the muscles recorded during the pedaling exercise, it's possible to distinguish the total right muscle contribution and the total left muscle contribution in order to have information about the symmetry of muscle activation contribution between the two sides, right and left. Now, let's analyze together this uh, first example. You can see, okay, sorry, in this, uh, in this case, uh, the, the use of setup muscles uh, was right tibialis anterior, gastrocnemius medialis, rectus femoris, and biceps femoris, or right side and the same muscles for the, for the left side. So we decided to evaluate an agonist and antagonist uh, muscles of the distal part of the lower limb and on the proximal part of the lower limb. You can see that both right and left tibialis anterior have an abnormal activity during the second part of the propulsive phase between 90 and 180 degrees. These muscles are active when they must be off. And so they are in co-contraction with the antagonist muscles, the gastrocnemius medialis, of course. All that means energy waste. Moreover, it's important to evaluate also the size of the standard deviation band. Right and left rectus femoris and right biceps femoris have a larger band. All that means that the muscle uh, is not able to have exactly the same and constant behavior cycle by cycle. So we have low efficiency. So we would like to find an explanation to this uh, uh, muscle behavior. First of all, we have to understand which factors can influence the EMG patterns during pedaling. The coordination strategies adapt to various constraints, such as uh, power output, pedaling rate, show pedal interface, body position, training status, and fatigue. Let's focus on one of these factors, in particular the body position. The most common changes in the body position on the bicycle are due to saddle and handbar position. The saddle can be adjusted through um, height regulation and horizontal uh, translation. The bike handbar, uh, handbar sorry, can be also adjusted through height regulation, horizontal translation, but it's important also to consider the position of, uh, of the hands. 
the different combinations of all these vectors can modify the joint angles and the trunk orientation. A proper position on the bicycle is paramount for both cyclists interested in performance and patients involved in rehabilitation therapy. Now, I show to you what happened by moving up the saddle. It's immediate to see that the standard deviation sides of both rectus femoris and biceps femoris is reduced. Moving up the saddle, probably we put both muscles in a better condition of working. The hip center Is, uh, is moving upwards. The knee center of rotation moves upwards and also backwards. And the knee is more extending. In this new condition, the rectus femoris and biceps femoris are a little bit lengthening in respect with the previous starting position. And so, they are able to um, work better in terms of muscle activity consistency over the cycles. About the activity of the tibialis anterior, nothing changed. Probably the reason of this strange behavior has to be looked for uh, somewhere else because it seems joined to a, a motor scheme um, fixed by now. Okay. In this second example, let's see what happens. In the third quarter of the cycle, from the bottom dead center up to 270 degrees, the right gastrocnemius medialis has another abnormal peak of activation instead of reducing the activity up to the complete offset. Now, let's look at the left rectus femoris. During the pushing phase from zero degrees up to 90 degrees, the activity of left rectus femoris is already decreasing because the peak of activity is anticipated and falls back into the pulling phase between 270 and 360 degrees. Moreover, the standard deviation is larger. Let's remember that obviously when the right lower limb is at the, the bottom dead center, the left one is at the top dead center. Probably since the rectus femoris is not working regularly and it's not contributing uh, adequately during the pushing phase, the right gastrocnemius provides another burst of activation in order to compensate. Also, in this case, we move up the saddle. Gastrocnemius and the rectus femoris now are more lengthening. The most important change is the disappearance of the second activation peak of the right gastrocnemius. But at the same time, the left rectus femoris has improved its consistency of activity over the cycles and moved forwards the activation peak so that now it falls back into the pushing phase properly. 
Okay. I have finished. Thank you very much for your attention. But let me close uh, this uh, webinar underlying uh, a very important uh, concept. The BTS uh, bike functional protocol was not born for bike fitting, but for a functional evaluation of the muscles during pedaling. We don't claim to set the bicycle on the base of muscle behavior, but we think that it's mandatory to know how the muscle activity changes and adapt to the different conditions created by the modification of other parameters, such as power output, RPM, show pedal interface, and so on. For a complete understanding of the athlete's behavior on the bicycle, together kinematic and dynamic information, it's necessary to know also the muscular working conditions. Okay, now I really finish my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you again.